What is the split primary palette and why do we use it? The split primary palette means that you have a warm and cool version of the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. A warm version of a color means that it's going to lean toward the warmer side of the color wheel. And a cool version of a color means that it will lean toward the cool side. The red that I just painted first was a warm red. That means that it's got a little bit more yellow content in it. It's leaning toward the yellow or the warm side of the color wheel. The second red is a cool red. That means it leans toward the blue, which is on the cool side of the color wheel. Here's the color wheel. As we know, it's divided into warm and cool on either half. So for the red, the one that leans warmer is the one that leans toward yellow. For the cool, the one that leans cooler is the one that leans toward blue. Now I'm moving on to my yellow primary color. This first one is a warm yellow. That means it leans toward red. As we know, red is a warm color, yellow is a warm color, and so the one that is leaning closer toward the red side is going to be considered warmer. The second yellow is a cool version of yellow. This means that it actually leans toward the blue. It's very hard to see on screen, but in person you can tell one feels a little bit more uh, yellow orange and another feels a little bit more yellow green. The blues are a little bit trickier and this might just be something you have to commit to memory. A warm blue is going to be slightly more blue green. It leans toward the yellow side, whereas a cool blue will be a little bit more blue violet, leaning toward the red side. This is where it's confusing. Wait a second. Red and yellow are both warm colors, right? Right. But what it has to do with is that um, colors have relative values. Yellow is lighter than red. If we were to take a picture of this and put it in grayscale and compare the values, the yellow value would be a lot lighter than the red value. We tend to associate light with warmth. So that's why a more yellow leaning blue is considered warmer and a more red leaning blue is considered cooler. Okay, remember how when you have two opposite colors on the color wheel, when you mix them together, you get what's called a chromatic gray. In layman's terms, it just means you get brown. When you mix colors that are analogous with each other on the color wheel, then you're going to get a pretty pure color. Um, so a blue and a green, you're gonna mix together and get blue-green. The farther away you get from a color on the color wheel, the more those colors will neutralize each other and become more of a brown. So let's see this in action. I'm going to use the warm red, which is kind of, remember, a uh, red-orange, and I'm going to use the warm blue, which is sort of a blue-green. Now I'm mixing them together because red and blue makes purple, right? I'm trying to get a purple color. Here I'm painting it on and just lightening it a little bit so we can perceive it a bit better. But since I've used that warm red and that warm blue, it's almost like they're opposite from each other. And that's why I get this kind of weird brownish purple, almost a gray. So now I'm gonna try it again with the cool blue, the ultramarine blue, and my cool red, which is more magenta. And I'm gonna mix this up. And as you're gonna see, it's going to be a much more pure violet. It's, it's much more true. I'm lightening it up here with a little white just so we can perceive the color a little bit better. But as you can see, um, it is a much more true purple than that first version that I mixed. Next, I'm going to mix up yellow and blue to make green. I'm going to start the wrong way first. I'm using my warm yellow and I'm using my cool blue and I'm going to mix these up together. So as I paint this on the paper and lighten it with a little bit of white, as you can see, it's green, yes, but it's a little bit of a muted green. I would maybe call it a chromium oxide green, right? It's just got a little bit of neutrality to it. So now, and that's because I mixed sort of my warm yellow with my cool blue, which look at the color wheel, those are almost across the wheel from each other. So that's why you're getting that kind of browning effect. So now I'm gonna try it with my cool yellow 
and my warm blue, these are closer to each other on the color wheel, as you can see. And as I mix these up together, you're gonna see it's a much more vibrant and pure green color. Again, a little bit hard to perceive on video, but this is a much more true green. I would call it maybe a grass green or a Kelly green. It's what you think of when you think of a bright color wheel green. The final mixture I'm going to do is orange. So I'm gonna start out with my cool yellow and my cool red and make my first orange swatch here, lightening it up a little bit. Now, because the cool red leans a little bit more violet and the cool yellow leans a little bit more um, green, uh, this is a slightly off orange. It, it's hard to tell and some colors are, are more intense than others. Um, the second version, I'm using warm red and warm yellow. And because they are closer to each other on the color wheel, they're gonna create a very true and vibrant orange. We can really tell the difference here between those top two mixtures. Um, the orange is a little bit harder to perceive. But as you can see, when you know a color's location on the color wheel and the way that it leans, it makes your color mixing much more effective.